into his marvelous life. Mm, you are who you are yesterday, today, and forevermore. You will be what you are. You never change, you never fail. You will fail.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He deserves our worship. Amen. What shall I say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall I say?
I bless God for your life, for coming to the tune tonight. And I know that your God will bless us tonight and your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. And wherever you might be watching us, I welcome you all. Um, yes, Lord, to this year 2024 family conference. Yes, the will of God for the family. Yes, I trust God that God will gladly bless us tonight. I just call your neighbors, whatever you may be watching, call your neighbor, call your friends, and let's sit together at the table of the Lord to, 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 to be a bless tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we give all the praise for you for this day that you have made for us. We are rejoiced. We are blessed. We are highly favored. Accept our thanks tonight. Accept our praise tonight. Accept all our worship tonight. Yes, Lord. Well, this is the day that you have made for us. We say, Lord, thank you. Forgive us this great day. Thank you for year 2024. We thank you for our family conference this year. As we have begin today, we say, Lord, we appreciate you because you are God of family. We honor you. We magnify you. You are the one who first instituted families. And that's why we come to the throne of your grace this evening to learn from your feet. Father, in Jesus, bless us tonight. Bless every man, bless every woman, bless every family. Wherever they might be watching, Father, bless us individually. Our home, our family. Bless our family. Bless our children. Bless husband and wife. Bless us our family tonight. And as a church of God, bless us tonight through your word. Let your word come with express, with power, with word, with word, with power, with with wisdom. Let your word impart knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and let your word profit us as we are going this very particular day and this very particular week. And I know that what our life will never be the same again. At the end of tonight, we are coming back to praise your name. Thank you, Father. We give all the praise to you. We give you all the honor to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah once again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray and bless God for your life. And I know that all tonight will be a great blessing for you. And I welcome you once again into the Family Conference 2024. The will of God for the family. Every year like this, we always bring our family onto the throne of the grace of God. Just again to remind ourselves, to impart ourselves. Yes, Lord. And to ensure that well, we are still in tune well, with, the, with, with God, with our family. And I know that this week, throughout this week, you will be blessed in Jesus' name. This week I have been programmed to be a blessing unto our family. We have a God plan well, for our family and the needs of the woman and man. Yes, and no room for divorce. This is part of the future that we are going to discuss about this very particular week. Know your spouse and the key to your marriage together. The key is to keep your marriage together. And again, the place of money in marriage and the, the in-laws and question and answer. So please get yourself ready and join us throughout this very particular week as we go in this family conference. And I know that God will bless individual of us in Jesus' name. Let us once again play. We all begin tonight. If you can join me and open your Bible together with me, we, it's Matthew chapter 19. That is the scripture for our team of our conference for this year. Matthew chapter 19, I will read from verse 5 and 6. 5 and 6. Matthew chapter 19, 5 and 6. And said, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then, they are no In the name of Jesus Christ, at the end of tonight's service, the praise await our Lord. Amen and amen. Yes. Every time we the will of God for the families, we see the, it's so important thing for us to know that yes, 
in the days that we are, a lot of things are happening in the, in the body of Christ, even our families. Not only let us talk about the world. When we are talking about families, I talk about Christian families, not worldly families. Because we are children of God and we must bring our, our family into, in line with the will of God. We must bring our family in line with the will of God so that we can be able to prosper, so that all the purpose of God for our family can come to pass, can come to manifestation. That is how we can be able to fulfill purpose and destiny in life. Without our family come to, to the, in line with the will of God, automatically, yes, we will fail. And I pray that we will not fail in the journey of, of life. We will not fail in the journey of life. When we, when we do, um, our family is not in line with the, in, with the will of God, automatically, the, the, the essence of it is that well, it's a failure. But I pray we will not fail. Your family will not fail. Husband and wife will not fail. Our children will not fail in Jesus' name. Yes, God has called us. God loves us and He has called us unto a holy families. And God loves families. And God is the one who first of all is their family. And in view of that, we must work according to the will of God. All our family will, must work according to the will of God, according to the purpose of God, so that it can be well with us, so that it can be well with our family. And that's why as a church, we always will bring ourselves into the conference of the family matters. Family matters in the will of God. And I pray that God will bless us this year again in Jesus' name, just to encourage us, just to motivate us, just to see where we are, just to see how we are doing, and just to adjust our family, just to adjust ourselves individually and collectively, so that we can be in line according to the will of God. I pray that will be our portion in Jesus' name. What I have for us tonight is God's plan for the family. God's plan for the family. I will start from there tonight. God's plan for the family. And when we are talking about family, we are talking about husband, we are talking about wife, we are talking about the children. So family consists of family, husband and wife and the children. So we must know that one. And the, our, 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 as, a, as a Christian uh, center, we see, yes, our, all our program for tonight and throughout this week is centered on Christian family. It's centered on Christian family. Because not only, not everybody will accept what war, what God has already planned for the family, not all, but we Christians, we are endeavored to, uh, to, to apply the will of God into our family and to work in the will of God so that it can be well with our family and that's how we can become all children of the Most High God. I pray that our family will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God's plan for man was that he, he dwelled the, in the marriage and the home and the family. God's plan for man is to eat God himself to dwell in our family, in our marriage and in our home and in our family. That is the plan of God. God to be in our homes. God to be in our family and to dwell in our marriage. And I pray that God, that will be our portion in Jesus' name. Yes, that will be our portion in Jesus' name. If God created us, in his image is his likeness. Automatically, God must be in our life. God must be in our home. God must be in our family. God must guide us, lead us, and direct us according to the purpose that he created us for so that we can be well with us, not only well with us, so that we can be able to be a, well, a blessing to our generation. A blessing to our generation. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. The, the Bible said that all, then that God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of, of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and all over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse, 20, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. Verse 28. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the heart, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that move on the earth. That is the will of God. That is the, where God started with man. The Bible says God created man in his own image. Male and female, he created them. According to the image of God, according to the likeness of God, that is why God must be in our marriage. God must be in our family. God must be in our home. 
Yes, because it's the architect of life. God himself is the architect of a man and woman. God is the, is the architect. So automatically, we, uh, we need God in our home, we need God in our family, and we need God in our marriage. And I pray that God will be there for us in Jesus' name so that we can be able to fulfill it. The Bible may want us to, God wants us to be fruitful. God wants us to multiply. God wants the, the family to, uh, to, to fill the earth and subdue, having dominion upon everything that he has created for us. That is the will of God. And if that one is going to come to pass automatically, yes, we have to ensure that what we walk in according to the will of God. We have to see what the will of God said to us as a Christians. We have to see what, what does the will of God said to us so that we can be able to walk in the will of God. There's, there's nothing we can do without us knowing the will of God. We cannot walk in the will of God. That is why it's so important for us. If we want our family to be a Christian family and to be a glorious one, automatically we must know the plan and the will of God for our family and allow our family to continue to walk in it. I pray that God we answer our prayer in Jesus' name that we walk in the purpose and the will of God individually as husband and wife and our children in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I say it is the plan of the for the husband and wife to come together in agreement to take dominion and authority to stop the work of the devil and bring the earth under subjection to God's plan. That is the plan of God, to dominate, to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and have dominion upon everything that he has created. And it is the plan of God for us, both husband and wife, and our, our family, our children, yes, to come together in agreement, to take dominion, to take dominion and authority to stop the work of the devil and bring the art in the subjection unto God's plan. So there is no stronger power of agreement on art that in the marriage union, you know, that what well, than in the marriage union. You know, there's no any power on authority on art that is powerful than marriage union. You know. That is why by God and God, God want husband and wife to walk in, in together in, in, in this way. Because Christ, because in Christ, the husband and wife are one. In Jesus Christ, we are one in God. We are one. Husband and wife, is, we are no more two. The Bible says we are no more two, but we are one. We are one. So automatically, why God make us to be, instead of two, husband and wife come together to be two bad, but they are no more, they are no more two, but they are one. We are two or three gathered, the Bible makes us to understand. We are two or three people gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Matthew 18, 20. It makes us to understand that we are two. We are we gather together or to, as, as a children of God. God is in our midst. That is why by husband and wife we have to work in together so that God can be in our home, God can be in our family, and God can be in our marriage. Yes. God suggests the impact of two, he, he, he make a difference. The impact of two in agreement in, is powerful than one person. The impact of two, you make a difference. Yes, two plus two, when you come to synergy, it's, it's not four. Or one plus one, it's not two. When, when husband and wife come together in agreement, in power and in everything, they can do more exploit in the planet of the earth. Yes, the Bible says one, we kill thousands. And two, we set to all ten thousand are place. Those, that is why, what the power of agreement can do. When husband and wife can all come together in a family set, yes, they can pull down the stronghold of the enemy, destroy the power of the enemy that wanted to affect their home and family and bring the devil onto the subjection of, the, the, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. It is, a, it is a shocking statistic that is in the days that we have, more than 50% of new marriages in our country today are heading in divorce. Yes, the statistic appear to be about accurate, even Christians' circles, as in always, well, always also in wallet circles. The, the statistics well, is so accurate. The statistics has to be changed. We have to need to change this statistic well, by, well, by challenging our positioning in, in studying the word of God to gain understanding of the principles of well, dating, marriage, homes and family, and then be obedient to the word of God. This is the only thing that can change that statistic. 
Otherwise, we will see that what the society just continue that war, where we call ourselves war, family, and what the people that we supposed to set a good example for the family, the whole world. But, but there is a, a more statistic that says that all Africa, 50% of all of marriages taking place in these states that we are, Christian circles, even 50% of them divorce. Why? Because of the lack of the will of God. Because of the lack of the knowledge of God, the word of God. That's my people perish. That's what the Bible say. Many homes divorce today because they do not take the word of God serious. They do not take the, the principle of the word of God serious when it comes to family. Yes, we take families, well, we take it for granted. We take the family for granted. Especially, we are talking about Christian family now. We are not talking about the people who have known no, we that supposed to set example to the world to see. Automatically, we must be serious. If we are told, if we are going to take that statistic, we need to engage well, in the principles of the word of God for our marriage, for our dating, for our family, and for our homes. How God's plan for us. How God wants us to, to, to work our work, to, to, to work our marriages and, and our families to be the best one on the planet of the earth. We need to, to be obedient to the word of God. I say one of the most distressing things we are seeing in these days is people who have been married 25, 20, 30 years, 40 years. They are suddenly calling it quick. Quit. I'm talking about Christian, Christian marriage now, Christian families. 25 years, 13 years in marriage, and they just say that, oh no, they, they want to be divorced, they want separation. It's a shocking, it's distressing. In a while, suddenly, they call it quick. I don't want us to live together with what? With, I, they, they, they just say, I don't want her to live together with you again anymore. They just talk like that to themselves. And what? The statistics obviously affect the college generation. These things we affect the golden generation that are coming behind us. Our people that all our generation that are coming behind us, our generation of our children, if kids nothing done to it, it will affect our children. That is why it's so important thing that well, this kind of seminar for marriage, for families is so essential to our life. The will of God for our family. We must know it and we must have understanding and we must ensure that well, we are obedient unto that principles. Uh, so that it can work for us. So that it can work for us. So that it can work for us. Yes. God created the man and woman to be together, to literally fill the heart with godly children. That is the purpose of God. He's created man and woman to literally go all fill the heart with godly children. If God created man and woman in his image, Automatically, he wants us to bring forth our generation in a godly one. Godly one. He wants us to bring. He made man and woman in such a way so that they could produce their own kind after them. Their own kind after them. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 makes us to understand. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the heart, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish and the sea. And over the force of the air, and over every living thing that move on the earth. That is the plan of God. To be fruitful, to bring forth, reproduce, or a godly children. That we do the purpose and the will of God on the planet of the earth. Bruise the head of the enemy. Yes, Lord. And raise the godly generation. That is what God has called the family to do. Marriage is one of the first God's institution. Marriage is one of the God's first institutions. After God created man and woman, the first thing that God established on the planet of the earth is marriage. That is why if God establishes, God has to maintain it. He, we take God's words, he take God's principles, he take God's voice and word of God to maintain our home, to maintain our marriage. Because marriage does not just come from what? From head knowledge of all one person or one, one, one government. No. It is architect of God. God designed the marriage. God established the institution of marriage. So automatically, if it's going to work well, if it's going to be well, make, bring glory to God, our home, our family, automatically, God, we need God in our home. We ask, we have to follow the will of God. He has to be that what we walk in the will of God. I pray that God will give us understanding. Give up with God, give us understanding. Yes, many people marry today, they neglect that word, 
They neglect the will of God. They don't care about it. They don't take the marriage to be serious one. They don't take it. And they want a God, they want God blessing. It's not possible. Marriage was the first institution created by God. Whenever we start talking about marriage, home and family, God has involvement. God is God is interested in this. God delighted any time, any day, we get settled like this, like this day. As we are talking about marriage, as we are talking about families, yes, God delighted in it. God wanted to be involved in it. God get involved. I pray tonight, may God get involved in your home. May God get involved in your marriage. May God get involved in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. God have interested in families and fears. Anytime we gather together, talking about God, because that is the family is the baby of God. We are the children of the Most High God. We are the family of God. He instituted us and He established us on the planet of the earth. So when we are talking about it, it delighted in it. May God be delighted in your home. May God delighted in our family. May God delighted in our, 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 our children's life. May God delighted in the life of husband and wife. May God delighted in it. In the body of Christ as well. In the name of Jesus Christ. May God delighted. I involve in our matters. Involved in our marriage matters. May God involve in our family matters in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 2. Verse 24 to 25. He said, And God said of the marriage, Institution. Therefore, the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. A man must leave his father and mother and join to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. It's a principle that must not be broken. Anyone that broke the principles of the word of God, he will buy back. He will, he will not work. Yes, a man, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall be become one flesh. Verse 25 says, They were now both naked, and the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. I pray you will not be ashamed. You and your husband will not be ashamed. Families, you will not be ashamed. Our family will not be ashamed. In the name of our children, they will never be ashamed in the journey of life. As we are going, as we are going, make the, the, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of God's word come to our life so that we can be able to walk align with what the will of God in for our family in Jesus' name. The joining together of husband and wife is the smallest cell of the church. Yes, wherever two people who love God coming together as one, that is the beginning of the church. Yes, the church starts as two. Yes, we are two or we are two or three people gathered in my name. Once husband and wife join together, yes, that's the, the smallest cell of the church. That's why husband and wife, whatever they burn on the planet of the earth can be burned in heaven. If we walk in the will of the word of God, walk in the principles of God, do you know it work well? But we, we, we take the marriage for, for granted. We take family for granted. We take the word of God for granted. We take that institution for granted. And that's why at times... It does not work for us. That's why divorce is in, in, inevitable for, for Christian family. It's supposed not to be like that. That is not how God designed his family. That is not how God designed it from the beginning of the, of the world. God, God, there is a word of God. Say man and woman must leave their family and one click together and become one. Praise God. And that one, when they click together, it is a power of authority that what God can bring to their family that even they Agreed on touching anything on the planet of the earth. God will do it for, for the family. God will do it for the family. Let me move down to the marriage covenant. Let me move to the marriage covenant. Marriage covenant, the God is the third party to the marriage covenant because God established it. Anytime a man and woman come together the, the, as a Christian, the, 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 the third person in that marriage, in that home, in that family, is God himself. God is the top party to the marriage covenant. The most important thing for you to realize is, the, is that marriage is a covenant. That is one thing that some people do not understand. It's a covenant relationship to which God is a third party to it. Marriage is a covenant relationship to which God is a, is a part, third party to it. Marriage is not something you can cast away anytime you want. Anytime you want. It's not a food. It's not a car. 
It's not things that you can do that perish away that you can just can. It's established. It's, it's an institution established by God Himself. In marriage, you are in a covenant agreement. When you know that one, marriage is a covenant agreement. Anytime you want, well, in marriage, and God doesn't see you as your spouse, as two. God sees you as one. It's a covenant that agreement. No, when two agree, it's no more two agreement. It's a one agreement. Yes, it's agreement. We have war, well, and your spouse as one. God doesn't see two. He doesn't see husband and wife, but he sees one person. And he sees you as one. If it may be, it may be that one partner may be weak than the other. If you are the stronger one, you may have bear to bear the burden of the wicked one or the weak, weaker one. But if you stand in agreement with God, He will move on your behalf in your marriage and bring you to harmony together. I pray for harmony as you are standing together in your home, in your marriage. And God will bring you harmony together with your wife and with your spouses in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for togetherness, harmony in your home, harmony in your family. I pray for harmony in our household in Jesus' name. God will grant unto us. As we stand in agreement with God, God is ready. When we are ready, God is ready any time, any day. What are the what what are the terms of their covenant? A covenant contains element of bond, an agreement, or and a contract. But when you come to but a covenant is far more than that. It is all what your well, agreement, bond, and a contract is a element of a covenant but when it comes to covenant of himself covenant or relationship is far more than all this put together a covenant involves a union a uniting together and a commitment of one's total life to another that's what we are talking about when we come to marriage when we are talking about going to marriage yes well a, a, a union a, bond, well, a union, a commitment of total life togetherness and a unity, a unity together, united together. So when those three things, union, unit, uniting together and a commitment of one's total life to one another, that is what we are talking about, a covenant relationship. In covenant relationship, each person must be willing to share and impact to the other one. There is no competition in covenant relationship. Individuals are to be well ready to impart, willing, willingly, not grudgingly, willingly to share and impart one another, one another, to impart one another. Yes, that's what it, we are talking about, why marriage is so important, eh? that God does not take it for lightly, and God establishes it, and that's how God wants us to, 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 to see it. You must be united, you must have a unity, and you must it's a union, and you must have commitment, life commitment, not partly commitment, not years permitted, not one year, not five years, not ten years, not twenty years. Till they do us part, till God call us to, to, to his side. That is what the, we are saying when we enter to covenant of marriage, when we enter to covenant relationship, not for part time, not for some part of the year, not for no. The dead to us, man. May God give us that grace to stay at home and our family. May God give strength in our family. Short time like this, we need a strengthening of the Lord in our family, in our home. Home to be strengthened. So we can be able to see our homes and family as God sees it. The will of God is to unite it together. Commitment, sharing together. The dead to us, part. Not partly, not 10 years, not 20 years, not, not 30 years. The dead to us, part. Amen and amen. Yes, living and cleaving. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 say, Therefore the man shall leave his father and his mother, and be joined together his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Living and cleaving. We can be able to see that what it is a principle that a man and woman's husband and wife or spouse, we must, we must leave their father's home. We must live there and join together and, and what? And join together and become one flesh so that they start another race of life, so that they can start their own family of life. That is the principle of the word of God. 
But if one is not moving away from home, or two of them are not moving from, from their families and join together, automatically there will be trouble. One of the most important things about really, uh, really loving your spouse in a covenant relationship is leaving your family. It's about leaving your family. It's a command from God. A man has to leave his father's house and mother's house. And, and when you look backward, when you see families, whether Christian or non-Christian, you see that is the setup. It's a principle. So that they can be able to start their own family. And they have to leave and cleave. Leave your family, leave your, your father's house and cleave to your wife. And your wife leave the, her father's house and cleave to the, the husband. It's vice versa. That is, is important. It's important thing in, in family. Some people leave, some people never get around living. Some people never leave home. They married, but they never leave home. So automatically, this is one of the things that scatter many homes and family. Because yes, they still go back to their family, they still go back every day, every week. Well, they are still well, wanted to listen to their family. No. And no way out. You cannot continue to. To, to break the, the, the principle of the word of God and think that the family will work for that. No. Because God wants you to cleave together with your husband and with your wife so that you can be able to have a war, is a become a, 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 a an entity. Your own family unit become an entity. You become a center to God's will. Then you now continue to nurture yourself and in the purpose and the will of God. And again, bringing your own family and your children as well according to the purpose and the will of God. That's how God designed it. So, husband and wife has to leave their father's house, has to leave their, their parents' uh, family's house and cleave together. They can be able to start their own race of life. I pray if that is where you are tonight, may God bless that home. May God bless you. May you start where? As you are starting where, God will guide and lead and direct you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. Intimacy in the Christian marriage. There must be intimacy. It is God's plan that a, a family, there must be intimacy in a family. Uh, he started with husband and wife. Intimacy must be in our family. Yes, intimacy in Christian marriages. Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. Say, and they were both naked, and the man and his wife were not ashamed. God intends that there must be an intimacy between husband and wife. So the physical, emotional, and total needs of man can be met in that relationship without intimacy. The physical and emotional and total needs of both spouses cannot be met. But when there is intimacy, definitely, God's intention, the God plan is that for once there is an intimacy between husband and wife, there will be physical, emotional, and total needs. Total needs of the both, of, uh, both uh, spouses in their relationship will be met. This kind of intimacy requires work. It requires work. It, it takes effort to make it happen. Intimacy does not just come. It takes time. It takes work. In other words, it takes effort. It takes God's world plan and it takes your work both together to pray together and to work it out. I pray what has not been working in your marriage, in your family, will start to work as from today in Jesus' name. It's amazing. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes your word. It takes obedience. It takes the word. The, you take the principle of the word of God to make it happen. I pray what it has not been working in your household will start working in Jesus' name. You will have intimacy with your husband and wife, and you will have intimacy with your spouses in Jesus' name. Well, hey, it, things will work for you. Your own, your family, I pray for intimacy. Both husband and wife, God will grant unto you in Jesus' name. I say this, this kind of intimacy requires work. It takes effort to make it happen. It takes commitment. Intimacy does not just come, commitment. Both sides, from both husband and wife, commitment that, yes, we must have intimacy in our home. We must let it work. This marriage must work. This marriage must work. Must totally surrender unto the will of God and walk in the will of God. It takes grace of God to bring two people into place where each live and cleave. Two families that are coming from different backgrounds. It takes grace of God that all both of them have to leave their family and come together 
and come to unity and intimacy as husband and wife, it takes grace, it takes effort, it takes commitment. I pray, may God grace be upon your household. May God grace be upon your family. May God grace be upon your marriage. And the grace of commitment, may God grant unto both of you in Jesus' name. Intimacy is the willingness to be open and transparent. It is the willingness to be open and transparent with your spouse. That's what it comes to intimacy. That's why it's so important for when you come to family, men, husband and wife, to be their friends of each other, to be friends and work together, can two work together without agreement, to work together before they come to marriage. Yes, before you say, I do, ensure that, well, yes, you are compatible with brothers and sisters that you are, well, you are going out with. And when that one happens, it's easy to work out intimacy between you and him. Why? Because you have been working together as friends, and because if friendship cannot work together, if you cannot be friend of each other, yes, Lord, no way out that you can become as husband and wife. I'm talking about Christian, purely Christian's family I'm talking about. So intimacy is a willingness. You have to be willing. Yes, this is what, this is my days of my marriage. This is my day of my family. I want to work. I want to be a spouse to this, or to this brother or this sister. Automatically, I must be willing to be open and transparent in all my works, in all my days, in all my commitment to him or her. We must be transparent. That is the background of all intimacy. If there is no transparency and openness, you cannot work together. It is sharing of thought. Intimacy is about sharing your thought. Expose your thought to your spouse. Expose your thought, your dreams, your vision, your desire, your aspiration. Expose it. Let your partners know it. Let your spouse know about it. This is what I'm working about. This is what I'm working towards. Yes, this is my dreams. This is my aspiration. This is my vision in life. Let individual know. By that, when you, uh, when you are transparent and when you are open unto your spouse, then you can be able to work things together. Interest, your interest become his interest or her interest. Her interest become your interest or his interest. So it is very important for us to work that way. It is a willingness to open and transparent with each other. And again, sharing our thoughts and vision and dreams. And feeling in a free and flowing relationship. So that that is what brings freedom, relationship. If you don't have a freedom with a man or a woman that you wanted to marry before, and you go into that marriage, automatically you put yourself in trouble when you can get married. That is why it's so important to work as a friend and build relationship together. Build relationship. That is the will of God. That is the plan of God for a family to work, Christian family to work. We must work in, a, in according to the will of God, according to the word of God. I said nothing eating. All restraint in truly intimate relationship. There is no need to hide to each other. No hide and see. No. No hiding and see. There is no shame. There is no fear. There is no embarrassment in this level of love. Yes. When two are open. The Bible makes us understand. Genesis 2, 25. And they were all both naked. Naked means open. Naked means transparent. Man and wife were not ashamed. When you get to that level of intimacy, there's no ashamed in it. Why? Because both of you are transparent and open to each other. What you wanted to do in life, your, your vision and everything. And that is how you can continue to get on. Once you started a thing, whatever you used to start it, do you know? You build upon it. You build upon it. It's a shame that at, at times when family comes together, when marriage now takes place and children come forth, now, it's a shame that we neglect the will of God. It's a shame that well, many households neglect the family of God. They let, allow the, well, the, the family to deteriorate. They are not what they used to start with their family. They now does not build, use it to build upon it. If you start with the principle of the word of God, automatically and with prayer, with war, with intimacy, and war sharing together. And now, after marriage, after families, Children, now one children, two children, or three children, or four children, or regardless, whatever children, 
you become family. And if you are not using the same principle to build that family again, it, it will be in trouble. Regardless of how you know how to speak in tongues, regardless of how you know how to pray, praise God. If you, whatever you use to, to start your intimacy, and if you started with God, automatically you continue to build your family in God. You continue to maintain your relationship of your family with God. If you fail to do that, automatically there will be trouble in the future to come in that marriage. I pray your marriage will not have trouble, your family will not have trouble in the name of Jesus Christ. God that's put you together will be there for you to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. So develop intimacy at all levels is a, 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 in every phases of your relationship, it takes time. Development of intimacy in every level of your relationship, it, it takes time. It is a great effort to share it, to talk together, to pray together. It takes time. It does not one day, it's not one week, it's not one month. It is a continual process. And it's a continuous exercise. And as you are doing it, we are bringing God into the home and family, bringing God into, into the scene of your family, nowhere it will work. Especially when the, when the fear of God is in the both husband and wife, when the fear of God is in the family, yes, things will work together for the family. I pray may things work together in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray may things work together in your household, in your family. God first. When you put God first, when you know God is the first in the, in the marriage automatically and you continue to take God first day and night, in other words, let the word of God guide you. Let the word of God minister to you. When you walk, allow the word of God to be your encourage, automatically it will work. Allowing the word of God, obeying the word of God, yet yeah, it will work. It will work. Because no, nothing works except you accept the word of God and obedient and ready to be I'm willing to be ready to walk, accept whatever the word of God say. Whatever the word of God say, we will do. When you do what the word of God say, your marriage will work. Family will work. And war will be a, war, a, 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 a great family on the planet Earth. So, intimacy takes time. So, don't be discouraged if your intimacy does not start on time. And that is why by, at times, not until when you, war, when you mar marry, before or when you are in a family, before... You start relationship with husband and wife or relationship with your spouse. Yes, before marriage, you must continue to develop intimacy with your spouse. And when you come together now, yes, you build upon it. Not say, oh, I'm married. I don't need, I don't need my, it's my husband. Ah, I'm telling you, you don't know nothing yet. Until time we come, praise God. Many divorced to great that what many, many started with God, but nowhere are. When they now... The going, going, where? They neglect God. When we neglect God in our family, automatically we will suffer. Consequence of it. I pray that well, your marriage will not suffer. In Jesus' name. The marriage act. The will of God. Marriage act. This is, the being, this is being referred to the physical union between husband and wife. It is the will of God. We are talking about the will of God. Once the will of God is established in the family, the, the, the family will work. The family war. This is being referred to physical union between husband and wife and war, whereby the world call it sex. The world call it sex. As the marriage act is, we call it marriage act because that is where it belongs. Marriage act. God intended, yes, God planned the physical act of sex to be performed only in marriage. Yes, sex must only take place in marriage. Flowing through the bond, a bond of love. Flowing through a bond of love. Marriage must only exist in, in marriage. Flowing through a bond of love between the spouses. The marriage union, as God designed it, it is something very beautiful, holy, and honorable, and wonderful. Yes, that is how God designed marriage. Marriage is honorable. Yes, it's beautiful. It's holy and, and wonderful. It is a place where husband and wife can freely express their love for one another at the deepest level. The marriage act, which is what? Yes, it is a place. It is a place where husband and wife can express their love to each other in the deepest level. level. Not just service level, but in the spirit, soul, and body. In the spirit, soul, and body. And it is only those who are married are uh, 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 now, it is a place where they can say 
to the person whom they have committed their life to. I love you. I give totally myself to you. Nothing is with it. It is a place where husband and wife does not shy away from their, own, their spouses. They do not with anything. They just give themselves up to each other. That is the marriage act. Hebrew chapter 13, verse 4. He said, marriage is honorable among all, and the bed is undivided. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. It is a will of God. It is a plan of God. When we follow this, when we see marriage as God sees it, and our family will stand. Marriage is honorable. In other words, if marriage is honorable, the what go along with marriage will be honorable. The family will be honorable. Will be holy. Will be wonderful. Will be beautiful. Praise God. I pray may your household be beautiful. May your family be beautiful, honorable. In the name of Jesus Christ, and wonderful, and holy. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I said the married bed. The Bible makes us understand. That what marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, we God will judge. He said, God will judge them. I pray may God will not judge you in Jesus' name. The marriage bed has to do with the sexual act of marriage. Yes, God is saying the sexual act in marriage is is, what is honorable, is holy, and is undefiled. Is undefiled. We must get the understanding of what God is saying there. And we must have understanding when it comes to sex. Sex only are allowed in marriages. God's word say, but any fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Any adulterers, fornicators, God will judge. Fornication is the sexual act between single people. There's no, no formal commitment, no union. Nothing. It is the what? It's a what? It's open fornication. It's the sexual between single people. Adultery is when two people commit sexual act who are married, or one person is married and the other one is single, but they are not marrying each other. It is contrary. If the marriage is not to each other, and but they have already married, and that is what uh, where adultery comes from. That is the meaning of adultery. Praise God. I pray you will not fall into that, that scenario. You will not fall into adultery. You will not fall into fornication. Whatever your level might be, wait for your turn to come. Wait for your time to come. Yes, it's never too late. It's never too well. God never fail. If your own has not come to pass, continue to pray until the day. Praise God. I pray that you will not face the government, the judgment of God. You will not face the judgment of God. And if you are married, stick to your wife. Stick to, to, to the wife that God has given unto you. The wife of your youth. Let's stick to it. So that we will not face the wrath of God. God treats, God treats fornication and God treats fornication and adultery in the same light. In either case, there's no commitment. There's no bond of law. Yes. Adultery and fornication. There's no commitment. There's no bond of love, and there's no union, and there's no co co no covenant. So automatically, it's illegal. Adultery and fornication is illegal, and it's against the will of God. They are joined together in sexual act in violation of God's word. God look at both adultery and fornication as a violation of His law. Anyone that falls into all fornication or adultery, yes. You are violating God's law. And he said, I will judge the people. God said, I will judge the people. I pray you will not well, you will not face the judgment of God. That is why by we have to stay within the God's will. What is the will of God? God's will is that God, husband and wife to marry together. Marry and stay in your marriage. Stay in your marriage. God does not allow adultery or God does not allow fornication. If you are planned, you have not yet have your own own, own, uh, own own spouse, wait for your own turn. Wait and continue to pray and continue to pray the sacrifice. And God will see you through in Jesus' name. God will help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. 
We are talking about the will of God. One of the will of God is that all love in the marriage and family. There must be a love in the marriage and there must be a love in family. Where there is a love in a marriage, yes, it will transfer onto family because husband and wife and children make a family. When there is a husband and wife, as if they, are, they have a love to each other, spouses love each other from the beginning, before children even comes, no way have. That their love will, over, will radiate over their children when the children come. As they, they are growing up in their marriage, as they are developing their, 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 their relationship, and the children comes in, no way have. The children will see it, and the, the children will work, the family well, the, 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 the love will continue to radiate in the family. I pray for the love of God in your family. I pray for the love of God in our family. That is what we need. The love of God. The love of God. The love of God. That is whereby we must continue to invite God into our life, into our home, into our family, into our marriage every day. Every day we need God. God's love. God's love to guide us, to lead us. God's love to radiate over our family. God's love we must practice. God love is, is what we need to put into our family for our family to work. When the love of God will all radiate in our family, both husband and wife and our children, do you know nowhere are? The, that family cannot fail. Our household cannot fail. They can, that family cannot divide. I pray the love of God in every household, every family as we are watching tonight. And those who will, will listen to this message in the future to come, I pray for the love of God in your family. And if there are perventures, there might be what? Some, 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 some problem in your family, I pray for God's love to come at this time, at this hour, in the name of Jesus Christ. God will solidify your marriage. God will solidify your family in the name of Jesus. Amen. Love in, the, in, our, in, in our family. Love of God in our family. Love of God in our family. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, give us a good description of love of God as designed for all our relationship. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, give, describe the love of God. God designed it for any form of relationship. Any form of, it's a universal word. It's a universal, God's, God's love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is, is a universal when we practice it in any sect, in anywhere, it works. Relationship. It works in any relationship. It works. I say this portion of the scripture describes the agape love, unconditional, and God's kind of love. That's what that First Corinthians chapter 13 describes for us. Agape love of God, unconditional love, and it describes the God's kind of, is the God kind of love. First Corinthians chapter 1, and we chapter 13 i will read from first one chapter 13 first one he said though i walk with the tongues of men and angels but have not love i am just sounding brass and a pledging symbol love love is powerful and we are not just talking about love 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 it's not the set of kind of the love that you made mention in, in the world no the love we are talking about is agape, unconditional love of God. Love of God. If I have a love of God in my heart, he said, if I can speak like an angel, or tongues of men and angels, but I have not love of God, I'm just a way, sounding brass, a meaningless, and cleaning symbol. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountain, but I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to fill the poor, and though I give body to be born, but I have not love, it profit me nothing. That is how we can be able to see how powerful the love of God is. There's nothing we can do to exchange the love of God and the agape love, unconditional love. You, you have Sabike, you can have what well, eloquence, you can speak like an angel. Well, and you can well, if there is no love of God in your heart to or your spouses, you are just what well, making the most noise all over the world. You are just making the most noise. And if 
You are what? You can give a gift of prophecy. Yes. And have understanding of mystery of life. Have all the knowledge of this one. And have all faith. You believe everything. You believe God. And if you cannot have a love of God, even though you can move mountains, but have no love, is you are nothing. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. Even when you give out yourself, when you bestow your gift to, to, the, to, to the people, to, to the needy people, and you have no love, it's, it profits you nothing. In other words, there's no advantage of it. It does not profit you anything. But the Bible makes us to understand the love that we are talking about, the agape love, the love of God. Love suffer long. Love, love suffer long. Love endure. In other words, suffer long. It bear things. Husband and wife must be able to well, be able. You see, when marriage, husband, when family started, when any family set up, do you know that all? Yes, it's not always smooth. It's not always easy. It's not always just well, a rose on the wall on the bed. No, it doesn't like that. They bear each other. They learn each other. They work because they are coming from two background families. So automatically they cleave together now. Automatically many times they will, there will be a challenge. And, but they bear it. They don't quit. There will be a challenge. Hey, that doesn't mean because God said marriage is what? It's honorable. It's blessed. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. There, there will be no challenge. Of course, there will be a challenge. There will be every, every household, every family, there is challenge. But where the love of God is, you stay put. You stay in. You don't quit. You stay and long suffering. Learn from each other. Learn the challenge. Overcome the challenge. That is what matters. That is what the love always do. If you love, if you have a love of God in you, you don't quit your marriage. You don't quit your family. You stay indoor with your family and you and your spouses, you all, you all get it together. You all, you bear it together. You suffer it together. We, if it is a if it is a if it is a money matter, if it is a world language matter, if it is a world love matter, you teach each other, you train each other, you bear one another together until you have overcome every that of the challenges. Then you will see that what things will work well. And it takes love. It takes the love of God. The Bible says, love suffer long. It, no matter what how long it might be, stay put in your marriage. It shall work. And stay put in your marriage and your family. It will work for you in Jesus' name. The Bible says, love is kind. Love is kind. It's generous. Love, always kind. It's ready to do kindness. It's ready to, to, to assist, to support, to give out. Love, that is love. Most, you must be for your family to work. Marriage and family to work. You must be able to ready to, to have a love. Love is kind. You must be kind to each other. You must be ready to support. You must be ready to give out. You must be ready. Don't worry. Because marriage is not a selfish ambition. There's no selfish ambition in one marriage. There's no selfishness in marriage. It's not me, 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 me. It's coming together. There's no competition. That's why by two comes together, you are one. You are no more two. So automatically we don't see where you continue to see yourself too. Oh, it is, it is, oh, you, you are, I'm not going to do it for you unless. Mm -mm. Agape love is that all. Oh, yes, regardless of whosoever, you do kindness to people. You do kindness to your spouses. Regardless of the challenges you face. Whether he gives to you, whether he has, whether he does not have, nowhere. Two of you together, you are what? You are in relationship, you are in covenant relationship, what? In your marriage. In your family automatically you are one so be kind love is kind love does not envy you don't jealous your brothers you are you don't you don't jealous your husband you don't jealous your wife you don't envy your children as well there's no cause for it a great home a good family a godly family there's no need to be envy each other god does not call you to jealous god call you to what to assist each other, to uh, to be a good a, a good partner, to be a good spouse to each other, yes, to be a good one, uh, to commit each other together 
and to make your marriage and your family work. I pray your own family will work when you take this principle on board. The love, sober long, love is kind, love does not envy. Don't envy, don't jealous your brother or your husband and wife. Don't, don't jealous each other. And don't jealous your children as well. I've seen parents jealous children. When time comes, this is, you are the one who give back to, to them. And now why jealous? Because they are working out, they are doing good, no way out. Time is coming. You might think that they are not doing things for you now. They will do it in the future to come. Time is coming. No way out. They have your interest at hand. So don't jealous the, you know, don't jealous your, your, your spouse and don't jealous your children. Love does not parade itself. It is not powerful. It doesn't proud. There is nothing to proud about families. If it is your family, so what do you want to proud about? You want to proud to your husband or to your wife? There's nothing to proud about. There's nothing to proud about because you are one. When you see family of God is one, you are not two. So there's nothing to proud about. There's nothing to proud about. Yes, what you have, what you have belongs to me. What I have belongs to you. That is marriage. That is covenant. That is agreement together. When you come in agreement relationship of marriage, yes, what belongs to you belongs to me. What belongs to me belongs to you. That is the covenant relationship. So there's nothing about that. We own it together. It's not you. It's not me. It is what well, is for the family. That is how God sees all. That is the principles. That is love for you. That is love for you. Love does not parade itself and is not perfect. Fast five say, does not behave rudely. Arrogant is not behaves arrogant. Does, does not behave rudely. Does not seek his own. Selfishness is not selfish. Love is not selfish. Does not believe the God. Is not arrogant. Is not proud. Is not seek itself. Is not selfish. When you come to marry, when you come to families, a marriage and families, we must not be what self-seeking. Anything is about both together. That's why I always encourage people that yes, you do things in common. It's good to have things in common, and it's good to what to be open. When you are open, when you are not what, when you are transparent, so automatically, whether money, whether any other thing, nowhere. But devil at times we use it. Ah, don't let your husband know. Don't let your wife know. Don't let him see the money. Don't let him. if you see the money, you hold the money together. I pray we have a good family of prayed. He won't see, even if, he, if the money is in his bank account or our bank account. He won't see you sober or family sober and not bring the money out if it is the, for the right purpose at the right time. So that is nothing to seek your own. Thing. Don't be selfish. Love does not selfish. Love is kind and is generous. Love is not provoked. It's not easily provoked. There is a lot of things that we are put to both husband and wife in the family that we need to bear it. We need to what? We need to forgive each other. Don't provoke an individual. And at times things will happen that what it does not necessary that what somebody may, he may not mean it. It might not need to need to. Uh, it might not mean to provoke you, but don't don't see it as provocation. And if you see it as provocation, yes, you have to ready to forgive. You have to ready to let go. Ready, ready to let go. Ready to let go. Love does not provoke each other. Love will seek interest of each other. Love does not think of evil. You must not think of evil to your your spouses. That is how you can build a godly family, a godly relationship, and, and to the future. Never, love never think of what, evil. Love is not evil. Don't be evil. Nowadays, when you see what is happening on, on our society and on our street, every day nowadays, you see husband knife the woman, husband pour what, chemical onto what. I, I'm, I believe that one, that one is not in existence in a in Christian family. I pray. There is no abuse in family. Where there is a law, there is no abuse. 
there, where there is a love, there is no abuse to husband or to wife or to the children. Because nowhere are the love of God, where the love of God is here, is override any abuse. You have the mind of God, you have the, the, the spirit of God in you, automatically love is what you promote, not hatred, not evil. So there's no abuse. Love does not think of evil. No abuse. You must not have any evil things against your spouse. Verse 6 says, Love does not rejoice in iniquities, but rejoice in the truth. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. So, brothers and sisters, families, today, one thing is that our iniquities is a sin. And love does not rejoice in it. If you step up, if you, I, I, if you have something against me, the Bible says we must be able to let, well, let your spouse know this is what you have done. Yes, if he well, is ready, he, he will apologize. We must be ready to apologize. We must be ready to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did not mean it. Ah, I, I do not mean it. It is a mistake. It is a stupid. Yes. Find something to say about it. I'm well, genuinely sorry about what you have done wrong. Genuinely sorry about what's what, what you have done uh, what, against your spouse. Genuinely raise your hands up. I'm sorry. Yes, it's a mistake. Accept your mistake. That is a what? That's maturity. Accepting mistakes uh, is a what? Is a maturity. It's not a what? It's not an evidence of what? Weakness. It's a evidence of what? Maturity. So be mature. Love mature your marriage to say, I am sorry. Yes, it is my, my mistakes. Accept your wrong grace. Accept it. And the, the spouse, your spouse has to be ready to forgive you. That is maturity as well. To be ready to forgive. To be ready to let go. is a maturity. And that is love for you. Love always ready to, to, to let go. How many times? 70 times 7 in a day. Praise God. I pray may God give us the grace. Love always rejoices in truth. Celebrate goodness in your life of your spouses. Celebrate achievement, greatness. Celebrate better things. Celebrate good work that your husband is doing, that your wife is doing. Celebrate it. Rejoice in the truth. Rejoice in what is good. That is what makes love go on and on and on. That's what makes godly family. That's what makes godly children of God. Yes, celebrate the truth. Celebrate achievement of each other. Verse 7 says, Love bear all things. Look at that. Regardless of what happened, regardless of what comes to your way, yes, when you are building a God, godly family, it is a principle that love bear all things. How many things? All things. All things. Any challenges, any stone, any block thrown against your, your, your life, yourself, your husband, your wife, what? nowhere. You bear it. You bear it. At times you get to a stage of life that nowhere else, that nothing has meaning to you again. Rather than say, I'm sorry. Rather than say, oh no. Rather than building your homes. That is what God has called us for as a Christian family. So that we can be able to raise God's children that God is God is asking us to do. Let's be our things. Regardless of the challenges, don't let us quit. Don't let the devil make you quit. Devil is a liar and it's a trouble. It's a troubleshooter in our homes. Don't, so don't let devil bring troubles into your home and lie to you and say your husband, your wife is not good. Oh, see what is done for you. It's a lie. Be our things. Believe all things as well. Believe your husband and believe your wife. We believe it's about trusting each other. Trusting each other. Be open to each other. Transmit to each other. Trust each other. Have hope in all things. Though it may tarry, hope for it. Even things that are not happened tonight, hope for it. It will come for tomorrow. Yes, you might not have money today. You might not have yours and not have that car today. That house might not yet come. That children might not yet come. Nowhere. Wait for it. Hope for it. Christ. Is the hope of your glory. Hope for it. Hope for all things. God will not deny you. And God will not fail you. When you are hoping, your hope will not cut off. So let's hope for things that are not happening today. Yes, 
Maybe there's no, no meek today, that doesn't mean there will be no meek forever. Yes, there might be no money today, that doesn't mean that all money will not come tomorrow. When you work as a team, when you work in your holy matrimonial home, as a work, as a covenant relationship together with husband and with God in your home, with God in your family, with agreement of commitment or no way out. God will answer your prayer. When you can team up with your husband and wife, yes, a wife and husband, when both can team up together, nowhere, and touching anything on the planet, the Bible says we shall give to you. You have power in your home, you have power in your family. And when you walk in that principles of war, unity, nowhere out, your hope will come to pass. And everything that you are expecting, God will grant it to you in Jesus' name. Love and dear all things. Not only just believe things, not only bear all things, he endures. Many families today, what brings division, divorce into their homes is that war well, because they cannot endure. I've seen people. It is take endurance. Yes, they marry 40 years to 30 years. And when you ask them of what, how do they still stay together? They endure. They believe. They hope. Yet they do not start out on, a, on, on a bed of a rose. Or roast bed. They do not start as a what with golden spoon in their in their mouth in their family. They start as a crash. Now there's many of our young ones does not want to scars as crash as uh, from the scratch. They think that one no way out. They must have every heaven and heart before they can marry. They must have heaven and heart so that one don't know. It's not like that. That's not the will of God. There's a purpose. There's a destiny that that everybody carry. And there's a time for everything on the planet of the earth. There's a time for every family. Your time will not pass you by. When you believe in the timing of God, yes, seed time and harvest time will never cease. When the, there's a stage in marriage, there's a stage in family. When that stage of what blessing comes, God will bless your family. What you don't have yesterday, what you don't have last year, will come this year. But we must continue to ensure that God, we endure things. Endure Endure hardship. We are soldiers of Christ. The Bible encourages us to endure hardship. Yes, you might not have three meals in your home today, but that doesn't mean tomorrow we know well. We continue, we will continue like that. Tomorrow we change. A change will come to your home, a change will come to your family. That what you don't have yesterday, today, we will have it tomorrow. Yes, you will not have car, you have plenty of car, you don't have a house, you have many rooms. Time is coming. Just wait, don't be here. If you can bear and build a good relationship together with, with your spouse, no way out. You will be a winner in your family. You will be a winner. Your family will win. Your family will not lack. You know what? We know we beg for bread. God will make all things abound to you when you can be able to unite together. It is the will of God and it is the will to, for you to win together, for you to endure all things. When you can endure all things, that is the love of God. Love endure all things. Then things will fall in place. Yes, your career will fall in place. Your business will fall in place. Your, 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 how will your children's life will fall in place. Well, houses, car will fall in place. Money will fall in place. That's the time. That's the time. Let's endure. Let's be patient. Patient and endurance. You will win the race. Patient and endurance. That is love. Love is patient, love, love is what endure all things. And I pray that what your, uh, your family will start in Jesus' name. This is a principle, it works. Many homes that divorce today because they cannot endure, they cannot manage each other, they cannot what, believe in each other, they cannot trust each other. Not the even not the devil cause it, devil doesn't divide them, but they divide themselves. Praise God, because they cannot be able to patient, they cannot endure. They cannot bear, bear all things. They cannot believe that future will be better. Future will be great. When you cannot have a belief that future will be great. When you cannot have endurance that things will change. There is nothing that is permanent. Yes, in life. There is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Your life will change. Every day you change. If God promised that all, you will be fruitful. The Bible says God bless them. Be fruitful. Multiply the plenty of Trust in the word of God. Hold on to that word. According to your word, that my family must be fruitful. 
My marriage must be fruitful. My marriage must be established, expand, expand, increase, and multiply. Father, I hold on to your world. This is my family. We must not suffer. We must not laugh. We must not want. And do you know, God will not work against his word. God will always answer his word. God will always work, answer you when you can be able to bear all things and trust in God in your family. Verse 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 13, verse 8 says, Love never fails. Agape love. Love never fails. All things may fail. All things may fail. Devil himself will fail. Devil must, evil must fail in your home. Devil must fail in your family. Devil must fail in your marriage. You have to ensure that devil fail. Put the devil to shame. Don't allow devil to take hold of your home or your family. Put him to shame. Devil shame unto you. Let the devil know that you know and you know and you know. If you don't know, devil will defeat your home and defeat your family. And it's not his fault. It's mainly because you do not follow the will of God. You do not follow the principle of the word of God. When you follow the, 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 the word of God, yes, devil will not. No divorce. God does not plan divorce for you. God does not plan what? God doesn't say that what? there will be no challenges. There will be a challenge, but he has given you his word. Be of good cheer. Yes, challenge will not overcome you. You will overcome the challenge. You, you have the knowledge. You have the wisdom. You have understanding. You have the word of God to overcome the challenges. When you use the word of God, definitely you overcome the, the challenges. And when you know that devil will surely fail in your home and marriage. But love will never fail. Love will never fail. Love will never fail. And I pray your family will not fail as you are loving each other. As spouses, as we are loving our home and family, there shall be no failure in our home. In Jesus' name. Let me just quick, so that we can pray. Some couples of prayer today, before, we, before I finish. Agape love will never abuse another person. Agape love. You see? It will never abuse. There's no abuse in agape love. We will never abuse another person. It will hurt itself to avoid hurting someone else. Yes. Agape love, we, we prefer to hurt himself than hurt another somebody else. Agape love, we give of itself, even if there is hurting and pain. In pain, in sorrow, agape love, we give himself to it. That is love for you. It's, it, 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 agape love, we give himself. Ransom. That's what Jesus Christ did for us. He gave himself. The ransom for, for our pain, for our soul. Agape love will not give up on other person. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your spouse. Don't give up on your husband and wife. Don't give up on our, your children as well. Yes. Purpose and destiny follow. Time will come. As you are praying, your prayer over your family will not be in vain. God hear your prayer and God will answer your prayer. Trust in God that no way are. Victory will be your portion in your family in Jesus' name. Also, don't give up on another person. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your marriage. Continue to pray. Only the world, those who cannot endure, give up. When you love your mom and family, you will not give up. You will continue. How long? I don't know. Just continue to pray. But God knows the time. When your time comes, you will see that you know where your joy shall fall over your family. In Jesus' name. If you are praying for restoration of your relationship, keep on trusting God. Restoration we come. Restoration will come. God's love never fails. Believe that. Believe God and believe his word. His love for, all, for us never come to our end. The love of God towards family never come to our end. When you love God, you must know that God first loved us. And his love for us, he never runs out. The love of God never runs out. He never dry. He never come to end. What? He he never divorces us. God never divorces us. Make up your mind for your marriage that God will make it work well. Ah, I pray once again for your marriage will work well. God will make it work. As you are obedient to the word of God, know where are. Joy in your home. Joy in your family. Joy in your marriage. You will experience it and you will give God the glory in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. It is going to be good. Your marriage is going to be good. And be determined that nothing will separate you from the love of God. In Christ Jesus Christ, believe nothing will separate your family from the love of God. As you are going, God's plan for you is to stay together with your husband and wife and your father. Build that home. 
Build that family according to the love of God. And I pray, devil will not separate you. Family will not separate you. Friends will not separate you in the name of Jesus Christ. I say one of the greatest things about love is that it is always ready to believe. The best for everybody. Yes, be always ready to believe the best for your husband, the best for your family, be the best for your children, the best for your uh, spouses. Believe. In, in the marriage relationship, we need to be believed the best for our spouses. Don't be suspicious of your mate about what they said or the way they said it. Don't be suspicious. This is one of the things that kill marriages. This is one of the things that bring divorce. This is one of the things that keep, what? keep families suspicious of your husband and wife. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious of your mate, of your, of your spouse, about what they said or the way they said it. What they did or the way they do or what did they not do. But be willing to give them the benefit of doubt. Yes, they are innocent until it's proven guilty. And if they are guilty, you must be ready to forgive. That is love. When you love your home and family, when you love your spouses, you must be ready to give. Well, ready to be for forgive. Even if anything happens. If anything happens. Love never brings up fault of another person. It covers the fault. It cover. Love cover. Love never brings up fault of another person. It covers the fault. And there is an element of confronting one another, speaking the truth in love. Love always speak the truth in love. Love always they speak the truth in love. So you must be ready to forgive, and love never bring up fault of another person. Know that one. It's a principle. Don't bring fault of your, your spouses. Don't say, ah, you do this yesterday, you do that. Hey, I remember last week. I remember last year. I remember nowhere. You must be ready to rub off every wrong greens of your spouse well, and give your spouse new days every new days new love new love new love as you are doing that you see that your, your family will work and your marriage will work and it shall be established forever and ever in the name of jesus christ i pray tonight that as we are this throughout this week as we are encouraging ourselves or well, how to build our equality family how to build on our relationship. I pray that God will assist us, God will support us and in the name of Jesus Christ, that God will make our family to be a great one. God will make our family, that our family will not fail, your own will not fail in Jesus' name. I want us to pray tonight. I don't know where you are, I don't know where your family is, whether your family is doing great, yes, that's good. If they are, well, if they are not doing great, if they are doing average, if they are doing nothing, but whatever our situation might be, every household need, need prayer. Every family we need God. Every family we need assistance, we need the help of God. It's not yet over until it's over. It is true, it might be great, your family might be great today, but it's not yet over. You must continue doing what you are doing. You must continue doing what you are doing that make it great. Continue, never relax. And the devil is bad. That's why we continue to seek the face of God and pray about our family. And as we want us to pray tonight and say, Lord, I come to the throne of your grace tonight. Thank you for such time like this. Yes, family matters. Your plan for us is to successful. Hey, me and my household to successful. Me and my family to successful. Joseph, the, the, the Bible makes us to understand that all. Joshua said that all. Me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Me and my family, in order to, he has tested God. He has seen there is a great thing to serve the Lord and to bring the family to God. I want us to commit our family to God today. It's not by my, it's not by power. Father, once again, you are the architect of the family. Father, once again, you are the, uh, you are the one who established our family, Lord. You are the one who insisted the family. I bring my family before you, Lord. As me, my wife, and my husband, and my children, my wife. Yes, Father, bless our family. I want you to turn into prayer. Be merciful unto my household. Be merciful unto my family. To bless my home. To bless my family. To bless my children. To bless us, Lord, in this or the, in this home, in this family. Bless my family that we will not lack, we not want, we not beg for bread. Father, shall we pray in the name of Jesus for the blessing of God? The Bible said that God bless them. 
Hey, Father, let the blessing flow into my family. I pray, be merciful to my household, be merciful to my family, be merciful to us, husband and wife, for our children. Be merciful and bless our household, bless our family that we will not laugh, we will not want, we will not pray for prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I dedicate my family unto you once again to uphold our family, to strengthen our family. In the name of your, to guide us, to lead us, to direct us. We need your help, Lord. Support us in our vision, in our dreams, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, bring unity. Pray for unity in your home. Pray for unity in your family. Father, we pray for unity in our family. Unity, unity. Unite us together. Bind us together in holy communion. Bind us together in one accord. In the name of Jesus Christ, bind us together in harmony. In the name of Jesus Christ, bind us together. Let there be peace and unity. Let there be joy in our home. Let there be joy in our family. Let there be joy in the name of every household represented in CTRM. We pray for joy. We pray for peace of God in our household, in our family. In the name of God, we pray for commitment. In the name of God, grace of commitment. Grace in the name of to commit ourselves to so in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, O Lord, in our journey of life, in our marriage of life, in our family journey. Help our family in the name of God. Bless our family. Expand our family. Increase us in every areas of life. Strengthen us. Empower us more and more and more. More grace to know you. More grace to serve you. More grace to walk in holiness and righteousness. More grace to walk in unity. Grant to us as a family, including our children. Our children to walk in holiness and righteousness, to love God, to serve God, to worship God. In the name of Jesus Christ, make our family to be a godly family. Make our home to be a godly home. In the name of God, make our husband and wife to be a godly husband, godly wife, godly children. Father, in Jesus' name, we dedicate ourselves to you, Lord. In Jesus, empower our household, empower our family, empower this our marriage. Empower our family as we are going another day, another week, another month, another year. We dedicate ourselves to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hey, it takes family to make the church of God. Make every household, every family in Sitarem, in the name of, make them great. Establish them in your presence. Let them know your purpose and walk in your will. The grace to walk in the will of God, to walk in commitment, to walk in holiness, to walk in, uh, in righteousness. In the name of Jesus Christ, grant unto us. In the name of your grant to us, in the name of your make our family wonderful. Be merciful to us. Let our family be wonderful. Let our family be honorable. Let our household be honorable. Let our marriage be honorable. Let our children be honorable. In Jesus, bless us, Lord. Ha, ah, Father, involve in our matters. Involve in our family matters. Guide us, lead us, direct us every day, every week, including our youth, including our children. Guide all our children that you give given unto us. The Bible says, we and our children, you give given unto us, we are for signs and wonder. I decree and I declare, every household, every family, we and our children, you give given unto us, we are for signs and wonders. Our children is for signs and wonder. Ah, husband and wife, we are for signs and wonder. I am for signs and wonder. My wife is for signs and wonder. My children is for signs and wonder. Every household in this ministry, we pray they are for signs and wonder in the land of living. We will do exploit in the land. Nothing will stop us. Nothing will hinder our family. In the name of Jesus Christ, our family is expand, increase, and multiply. In the journey of life, in the name of Jesus Christ, uphold us and strengthen our family. Empower our family in the name of God to love you more. The love of God in our home. Hey, Yes, sir. Yes, let's pray for the love of God. Agape love, agape love, agape love. Father, grant unto us agape love, the love of God, the love of God, kindness, holiness, righteousness. In the name of grant unto us in our family, in our relationship, in the name of Jesus Christ, agape love, grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. That yes, that we will be kind to each another, we will not envy, we will not jealous, we will not pop off. In the name of Jesus Christ. We will not be arrogant, ar arrogant in our household, in our family. Father, bless our family. Discipline. Father, let the discipline be more grace to be disciplined ourselves, to love the Lord and to serve the Lord, grant unto every household. Tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We bless your name, we honor your name, we magnify your name. Father, that Lord, as we have dedicated our family unto you today, you will uphold us to the end in Jesus' name. There shall be no divorce in our family. There shall be no divorce in our marriage. In the name of your every member of CTRM, I pray for their family. You expand them, increase them, multiply them. Father, what is not enough tonight in every home, in every family, in every CTRM, Father, let it be more than enough tomorrow. 
As many that we hear this word, I pray for surpluses in their home, abundant breakthrough, abundant blessing in every household, in every family. As they are listening to your your word tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, abundant provision grant to every household as they are watching, as they are listening to this word. I pray for abundant provisions. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, financial provision granted to every household, granted to every family, granted to our, our children. Make us all be great in the land. Make us great in the land. Let your name alone be praised. We pray for great testimony. Let it come out of our family. Great testimony in the life of our children. Great testimony in the life of husband and wife. Let it come out. Thank you tonight. We bless your name. We honor your name. As we are blessing our household, bless your church. Let, your, let the church of God increase. Let city and continue to increase. Every household make us to increase. Expand your church. Increase your church. Multiply your church. Establish your name in this position. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. As you pray that prayer, may God answer your prayer. What has not been working in your family will continue to work. As from tonight, a change will come to that family. Hey, God will bring restoration in every areas of your life. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, financially, restoration. Joy of the Lord will be evident in your, in your, your marriage. Joy of the Lord will spring forth in your family. In the name of your peace that passes human understanding. May God grant us your home. May God grant us your family. May your family and land. I pray for supernatural provision. Food on your table. Clothes on your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not lack. You know what? And your children and your family will never lack. All our family will not lack. That is your portion in the land of heaven. So shall be in the name of Jesus. We thank God tonight. We bless you everlasting Father. For all you have done for us. That our family has been in your hand. You will watch over our family. You protect and preserve. That no evil thing will befall our family. Only shout of joy, shout of victory, testimony in our family. That will be our portion. Enemy lost will battle over all. Satan, shame unto you in every household, in every family that are watching tonight. Enemy, shame unto you. All power belongs to God. We overcome you and what? By the precious blood of Jesus Christ and the word of our testimony that Jesus Christ is the Lord over our life. Is the Lord over our home. Jesus Christ is Lord in our family. Now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. It's not by mind, it's not by power. It's God that show mercy. May God show mercy upon you. May God show mercy upon his church, upon our life. Now and forevermore. Amen. Somewhere with you. Go in that strength. And I know that it's somewhere with your marriage. Whatever it go to cost you, stay in your home, stay in your marriage. There's no divorce in the world, in the promise of God. There's no divorce in the word of God. God wants you to stay together till death do you part. And God will give you that grace. 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 You that grace. In Jesus' name. We have no, no abuse in every no abuse in love. There is no abuse. There is no abuse in love. Yes, if anyone loves his home or her home, no way. There's no reason for abuse. There's no reason for abuse at all. Whatever abuse might be, is 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 against the law of law, the law of the law in any home in every family. And God will give us peace and joy in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Amen and Amen. Don't forget tomorrow will be another great day. What well, we uh, on, tomorrow is uh, online by the uh, soon. We use soon tomorrow eleven o'clock, eleven midnight, eleven. 11 p.m. And well, don't forget, prepare yourself. We are going to pray about family tomorrow. We are going to have a wonderful night, wonderful presence, and a wonderful time in the presence of God. So God will give you the grace. Join us and invite other brothers and sisters and families. Well, that might be one challenge of the other. We trust in God. God is the God of family, and God will answer their prayer in Jesus' name. If there's any offering tonight, give your offering, and let's share the grace of God. In fellowship, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of Holy Spirit be and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy of God shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of God forever and ever. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. May God bless you. May God richly bless you. Have a wonderful night. In Jesus' name.